Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a popular retro look in Luminar Neo. This look is ideal for portrait captures, however, it will work very well on all photography styles. To top it off, at the end of the tutorial, I will also show you how you can save this look as a preset so you can use it on your own images in the future. Now, before we're going to start, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of the video, follow the link there and head to our Dropbox account where you can download the sample files. After that, you can follow me and do the edit on your own computer. Once you have the images, just import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. Now, as you can see, we are in Luminar Neo and we are in a catalog module. Here we are looking at the three sample files. The first one we're going to work on is the lady in a car. So just click on it, select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of your screen or using E on your keyboard. So now let's go ahead and create the lovely retro look. The first thing we're going to do is to go into our main toolbar and start with the develop tool that is in our essential section. Click on it to open it and we're going to start from the bottom of the list going into the optics. Here, just make sure that whatever check buttons you have here, just make sure they are checked and then you can close it. After that, we want to take care of our noise reduction and sharpness. So open both of them and start with the noise reduction. As we creating a look and something that we're going to use in the future on other images, we're just going to use the standard numbers here. We're going to go into luminosity into 20 and then we go into sharpening to 40. And with the masking, we're going to make sure that we are somewhere around 75. Now, the reason why we're using masking is that we don't want to sharpen anything that doesn't have a details, edges or texture. So, for example, the sky or some of the flat surfaces. So we are done with the noise reduction and sharpening. After this, we can go back to the top and start with the light and black and whites. With the light, we can just add a tiny bit of exposure, nothing crazy. We're definitely going to add some nice contrast. So let's go somewhere around 17 or 20. 20 is looking good. After that, with the highlights, just bring them down a little bit. Nothing crazy again, just somewhere around minus 10. Equally with the shadows, we're just going to open them up a little bit again, very gently to plus 10. Now, after that, we can move into our blacks and whites. With the blacks, we're going to add a little bit, so just somewhere around 10. And with the whites, we're actually going to go into the minus, again, just somewhere around minus 10. So very simple edit, little bit of exposure, extra contrast and highlights, shadows, blacks and whites, all in a plus and minus 10. Once we finish here, we can close the blacks and whites and lights and move into the color. Now for the retro look, we want it a little bit warmer. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our temperature slider and push it towards the right side, adding a little bit of temperature. The slider here in Luminar Neo is actually quite strong. So when you go quite far, it becomes way too warm. So for us, I think just somewhere around, let's say five. Equally with the tint, we want to add a little bit of magenta. So let's go ahead and add something around five again, maybe even more, maybe somewhere around seven. Once we finish with the white balance, we can move into the saturation and vibrance. 
The retro look usually looks quite washed out. So for this, we need to actually remove some of the saturation. We're gonna start with the saturation slider and go somewhere around minus 10. After that, we're gonna use the vibrant slider and that's where we are really going to remove most of the color. So we're gonna push it to somewhere around minus 50 or even minus 55. Can you see how that helped us to create the washed out look? Well, let's have a look at the before and after. It not only reduced some of the saturation, but it also removed good amount of the warm temperature. Once we finish with the color, we only have one more tool to use and that's the curves. Don't worry, we're not gonna do anything complicated here. We're just going to use the regular first curve. So just click on it to make sure that it's selected and then go to the bottom left corner of your curve, hold the dot there and just bring it up a little bit to create and add a little bit of fade. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use the curves, make sure you check out our curve tutorial that is available on our channel. So today, just very simply, take the point and drag it up. The reason why we're doing this is that we're adding a little bit of the cinematic retro fade. Let me show you the before, where we have a lots of contrast and lots of saturation in the darker parts of the image. And when we push it up, you can see how we're getting the fade and we removing some of the saturation and contrast. This is all we're gonna do here with the curves. So once you're happy with it, just close it. And now we are done with the develop tool. So close it and we can continue. The next tool we're going to use is the color tool. So we are still in an essential section and we go straight into the color tool. Open it and the first thing I always like to do is to increase the remove color cast slider. In this case somewhere around 10, it just makes a nice balance and it works quite well on most of the images. After that, we're gonna jump into the HSL panel. So just click on it to open it. Let's make sure everything is nice and visible and then click on a gray dropdown box and move into the saturation. If you don't know too much about the HSL panel, again, we have a full tutorial on how to use that on our channel. However, basically what you can do, you can adjust hue, saturation and luminance of the individual colors by using these sliders. So this is where we're gonna move into the yellow and increase it a little bit to somewhere around 30. And equally, we're gonna go into the blue and increase the saturation to somewhere around 20. This way, we're adding that kind of retro vintage feel of the yellow and blue colors. Once we finish, we can close the HSL panel, we can close the color tool and move on to another tool. This time, we're gonna be moving into the creative section and specifically the toning. The toning will help us to adjust the tones and bring the overall retro look. The first thing we need to do is to increase the amount slider all the way to 100 and then click on the shadows button. So now we're gonna add color and tone into the shadows. First come first, let's increase the saturation all the way to 100 and let's find the right color. What we're looking for is somewhere around yellow, orange and green. So I think just somewhere around, let's have a look, maybe like 57. Of course, the saturation is way too strong. So let's bring it down to somewhere around 20. After that, we're gonna do the same for highlights. So let's just switch, again, increase the saturation. And this time we're gonna stay closer to the orange. So I think just somewhere around, let's have a look, orange, yellow, maybe like 30, 35, 37. That's about it. And again, we're gonna adjust the saturation, similar amount, just somewhere around 18. Now let's have a look at the before and after, and you can really see the difference. It's very subtle, but it really makes the difference on the overall result. So now we can close the toning and again, continue with another tool. We have already added some fade using the curves in the develop tool. However, we can increase it and make it even more powerful by using the matte tool. So again, still creative section going into the matte tool. And here it's really simple. We just gonna use the amount slider and increase it to the amount we like. So I just think usually somewhere around 10 or 15 works very well for me. 
And if we want an extra fade, we can again use the fade slider under and add a little bit. So for me, I will have about 13 on the amount and five on the fade. Again, we can close the matte tool, apply it to the image and continue to another tool. Now talking about retro and talking about vintage photography, we definitely need some grain. For this, here in Luminar Neo, we have the film grain tool. Again, click on it to open it. And using the film grain is really simple. We're just gonna use the amount slider and add as much as we like. I like to stay around 10 or 20. I think after that is a little bit too strong. So let's go halfway and go for 50. Once we're happy with the film grain, we can close it. Now it's a good time to have a look at the before and after to see how far we got. I think that we already looking quite good. However, there are still few more things we can do. First thing first, again, coming back to the character of vintage photography. At that point, the vignette was quite strong. So we should add some vignette. For this, again, we need to go back to our essential tools, then into the vignette and just use the amount slider and bring it down. Now, normally I'd like to stay in the upper part. However, as it is a vintage retro look, we should go as far as minus 60. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the before and after. And again, it's another piece to the puzzle where you're creating the vintage look and the vignette can make a big difference. Once we're happy with the result, we can close it and we only have one more thing left to do. Talking about retro and vintage photography, quite often at that point, there were some kind of light leaks, camera leaks on the photos. To add this, we can use the power of the layers here in Luminar Neo. So we're gonna go into the layers panel, click on the plus sign, and here in the layers library, we can use one of the overlays that come with the application. So let's just navigate into the light leaks, and in the light leaks, you're gonna see this little colorful overlay. Click on it to select it, and it will be added to your image. It's already looking quite good. However, I think we should adjust it a little bit more. For this, we need to go back to our main toolbar, where we're gonna be adjusting the layer properties. First come first, I would like to take the opacity down a little bit. I don't want the effect to be too strong. So let's go ahead and maybe go somewhere around 55. And after that, I would also like to change the location of the light leak. I don't like it here. I would like it to be on the other side. So we can just use the flip option here and specifically the flip horizontal. By doing that, the light leak moves on the other side and it's looking much better. Again, if we want, we can adjust the opacity to get the look we are looking for. And once we're happy, all there is left to do is to see the before and after. And I think the result is really good. Now, at this point, I would go ahead and save this look as a preset. But before we're going to do that, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. Our Power Bundle is one of the best selling products for Luminar Neo with over 986 new elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. It comes with extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs and presets, and all of that allows you to quickly transform your images with only few clicks. To get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of the video or find out more about it on our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now that is out of the way and we can continue. To save this look as a preset, navigate to the bottom of your screen and click on the actions. In the actions, click on save as preset. Once you do that, you will be moved into the presets module and my presets library will open. You can see that our new preset is here and now we can change its name. So let's call it retro and vintage look. Once we're happy, we just hit enter and we have our preset saved. So let's go ahead and try it on another image. For this, we need to go back to the catalog module. And this is where we can use the other two sample files. Let's select the lady first and move it again into the presets. In the presets, what you want to do is you want to select the preset we just created. If you can't see it, just make sure that you click on the my presets library and then select the retro and vintage look. Click on it to apply it. 
you can see that it's looking great. However, again, the light leak on this image is on the wrong side. To adjust that, we just need to jump into the edit module, then into other layers, and there we're gonna select the light leak overlay. After this, we can go back to our layer properties and just flip it again to move it on the other side. If you would prefer it to be up, you can also flip it vertically and it really is up to you to find the right position and the right look. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudofphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.